hearts. I bring blessing to all that is online tonight. We are going to continue with our message. We start off in Egypt with the mixed multitude. And tonight, we are going to continue watch your church. Can the tears overcome the wheat? Watch your church, subtitle, can the tears overcome the wheat? We started in Exodus and we see the mixed multitude in Exodus have run over the church, captivate Aaron's mind. Aaron's made a golden calf and every man beside those men that went with Moses halfway up the mountain worshiped the idol. Can the tears overcome the wheat? So we start off in the Old Testament to see how the church had traveled and almost overcome by the devil. Then we move into the prophets. How God, what God had said to the prophets. Brethren, I am not here to make confusion, but I'm here to open your mind. You know, I don't think I ever, the Holy Spirit ever put a subject like this together in my thoughts. It is a very serious trouble. My son said something the other day to me and I was thinking about it, but only now I can analyze it. He said something about the church and only now I can analyze what he has said. The church is not an easy place, but you have to understand the rhythm of the church. And I went through it for many years, 50 years and didn't quite understand why things are happening. I, when I look at the book of Exodus and I saw how the devil, or, or, how the devil used the people to captivate Aaron, that Aaron could have thrown away God in a couple of days and make a golden calf. Thank God that he sent Moses down quickly from that mountain. So you see what people, what a mixed multitude can do to the church. And we leave there and we went into the men of God. And to see how some of them have failed. And I was sitting there and I heard the word said, you have not done well with this verse. In Isaiah 54 and verse 7, I heard Isaiah 56 and verse 10, sorry. I heard the Holy Spirit said, you have not done well with this verse. Tonight, I'm not talking about our pastors, but I'm talking about the general church. Watch your church. Can the tears over overpower the wheat? But before we go into that area, we are going to go back as, a, as the Spirit had led me to the watchman. 
Look at the watchmen of your church. Look at your pastors of your church. Brethren, I'm saying to you, these are the men that are going to feed you that you should get into the kingdom. But some of them are not quite filled with the Holy Spirit. So we are going to go and look what God said one more time about the watchmen of the church. Even myself, look at Pastor Giff. Watch what I'm doing. Hear what I'm saying. If I'm going wrong, just come off the line. If I'm going right, say amen. So we're going to go back into Isaiah 56 and verse 10. We're not going to spend long there. Just a little review. Look at Isaiah, what God is saying to our watchmen, or the pastors like myself, our watchmen to watch over our soul. Listen to what God is saying. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 10. His watchmen are blind. Watch at what God's saying. When I was taught this, they never speak about our church. They speak about the church outside. God is saying to us, some of our pastors are blind. They cannot see what is coming. If a man is a man of God and something is going to happen to the church, he is the light. He is the candlestick. He is the angel of the church. God would speak to him and say to him, something is going to happen to the church. But if the watchman is blind, he would not see or hear until what comes upon the church. You don't want to be under a watchman like this. So this is why I'm saying, watch your pastor. See what he's doing. Does he fast? Does he pray plenty? Does he hear from God? So God is telling Isaiah, my watchmen are blind. Let's go down a little bit. They are all ignorant. Watch what God is saying. This is not about the outside pastor. This is the pastor in your church, in my church. They are ignorant. When a man is ignorant, he doesn't know. He might be very educated in the worldly business. But when it coming to spirituality, he's dumb. So he's not hearing, so he's ignorant of what's coming upon the church. So that is why I'm saying tonight, this is from the old message last week, be careful of your pastors. Watch him. See if he's sleeping. See if he's no, see if he know what he's doing about the word of God, about your soul. Is he attending to your soul? Is he taking care of it? When last he visit you? When last you hear from him? So the Bible said he is ignorant. That means he's lack of he's lacking of knowledge. And it might not be the worldly knowledge. He might be fully educated in what he's doing. Don't let that fool you. Position in this life fool a lot of us who we are in the world. But it's who we are in Jesus. 
Does this man hear from God? Is he a man of God? There are some pastors never fast in their life. How would they hear? How would they see? When something is coming upon you or the church. So the Bible said, he is ignorant. So look at him. Look, take a close look at your pastor. Is he ignorant about this spiritual business? I am not here to make any confusion, but here to help you watch. And I'm here to make you aware. The church, listen. I don't know how to put it. I don't know what word to use. But from my looking at this and from my experience, the church sometimes can be a sinking sand. So you have to know where to put your foot. You can get hurt in the church if you are not led. If you don't have someone to guide you, you go into the wrong company. So the Bible said, be careful that your pastors are not ignorant. Look at, the, look at this verse. They are all dumb dogs. Dumb dogs. A dog who cannot bark. Who would go in a meeting? A pastor would go in a meeting and he know that John Tom is wrong. But he sits there and he says, a word. But when he comes out, his mouth is loud. There are men like this. They know the thing is wrong, but they would not say it is wrong. Your pastor like this? He go to convention, he never say a word? Something happened in the church, he never say a word? This is what God is saying. Watch your pastor. Is he a dumb dog? God already doesn't like dog. And if he become a dog, and then he's dumb, he's not a man of God. How this man can save your soul when he's afraid to tell you mm -mm, what you are doing, they're not right. He allows all sorts of behavior to happen in the church. I cannot say nothing. This is what God is speaking about. What your pastor? Is he that kind of man? Is he a man that is blind? Is he a man without knowledge? Is he dumb? Go ahead, Sister Give. They cannot bark. Mm -hmm. Sleeping, lying down. Loving to slumber. These are all symbol of spirituality. Where this man is. Or these men are. They are sleeping. They are lying down. Not, not physically. All these are spiritual symbol of a dead man. Of a man that is sleeping. Not physically. You have to watch your pastor. He's sleeping. He's lying down. Love to slumber. Spiritual terminology. Who is your pastor? How is he doing? When he go up there, does he hear from God? Does he burn your soul? Or he come just to open up the church on Sabbath, make sure everything go fine, and leave. I see some of them. Brethren have a little wedding and a little get-together. As soon as the get-together done, they're gone. 
They didn't even stick around to shake hands. What kind of man are these? But when my elders used to preach this subject, they beat up every minister outside the church. But God is speaking to the ministers in the church. So be careful. Watch your ministers. So we are going to go to the New Testament and see what God say about the church. We are going to go to the book of Matthew. Matthew 13 and verse 24. Remember, we went to the book of Exodus. We look at the church. We see what happened. And Jesus called them a mixed multitude. So there were unbelievers within the church. And there would be always unbeliever in the church. The church, the church. When I came in, I thought it was a, a rose, a place that rose grows. Nothing can happen to me in the church. No, brethren. No. It can be sinking sand. If you don't have the experience and if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in the church, things would happen to you. So you have to be led by the Holy Spirit, because there are good people and there are bad people in the church. Sad to say that. Listen to what I'm saying again. Just as in Exodus, if you were here, you saw a mixed multitude almost overcome the church. It's the same church. So today, the subject is watch your church. Can the tear overpower the, the wheat? And the scripture that we that we went into many, many times. And before we go, go into the scripture, I want to read the scripture reading one more time. First Timothy 4 and verse 1. Look at the church. Look at what happens in the church. First Timothy. 4 and verse 1. The church is not a place of honey and milk. You find all sorts of people in the church. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that because you, you would think you are thinking like me. But now I'm growing up. I'm a pastor. I am seeing Read, read that for me, Sister Gift. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Mm -hmm. What? Listen this. Listen. This is a spirit church. Listen what he said going to happen. Go ahead, Sister Gift. That in the latter times. In this time. In this time. Look at what's going to happen in the church in this time. Go ahead, Sister Gif. That in the latter times, mm -hmm. some shall depart from the faith. Look at what's going to happen. People are going to leave the church. And let me tell you something. Don't take this leaving physically. Some of them are going to say right in the church. So they, they only leave the doctrine of the church. They only leave the deep spirituality of Jesus, but they are still here in the church. So read that again for me, Sister Gift. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking expressly and telling us what would happen in the last days. Get that in your brain, brethren. Get that straight in your head, in your spirit. So when things happen in the church, 
when you see your church change, when you see sinful people have, the, have, the, dominion. have dominion over the church, this is what he's speaking about. The spirit speaking plainly that in the latter times, certain things going to happen in the church, read. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Mm -hmm. Listen this now. Go ahead. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So let me warn you. Let me warn you. When you, say, when I, when you hear depart, it's not leaving physically. It's leaving spiritually. They are there. And they're going to dominate. Some of them are going to reach past the hoda. Some of them are planted there to wheat and the tear, the mixed multitude that over, overpowered Aaron, influence him. This is what he's speaking about, about. So we're going to go to the book of Matthew, and we are going to study something that I read and I preach about and never see it because it didn't reveal as deep as this to me. Let's go to the book of, of Matthew 13. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them. Watch saying, this, watch this. Jesus is telling us something about the church in parable. But I want you to get it in your spirit tonight. He's speaking to us in parable, but never left us ignorant. Read that again for me, Sister Gift. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, Listen what he said. Listen. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man. Which sowed good seed in his field? Let's go first to the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? What is it? Let's go to Romans 14 before we unfold the scripture. Romans 14 and verse 17. Watch, watch the kingdom. Watch the kingdom of God. You think, you think he's talking about in heaven? Watch the kingdom of God in Romans 14 and verse 17. Watch it. Watch at what it said. Go ahead, Cicely. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat mm -hmm. and drink. Stop right there. Stop right there. It is symbol. What is happening here? It, it is symbolizing what or what, 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 is not the kingdom of God, but he's going to tell us now what the kingdom of God is. Go back to this, the beginning of the script here. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat mm -hmm. and drink. Mm -hmm. Listen to this now. Watch this. What's the kingdom of God? Read it. But righteousness. Watch it. You're living in a different world. You left the world that you were, but now you are living a righteous life. So you now are enjoying the kingdom of God. Read it. But righteousness mm -hmm. and peace. Look, so, so you are in another world. You are in another world of righteousness and you are in peace. Go ahead. And joy in the Holy Ghost. And joy in the Holy Ghost. You have to look at yourself and see if that is your life. So we are going back here now to see what he's saying that is happening in the kingdom of God. Although it's a spiritual kingdom, but look what can happen in the kingdom of God. Read 24. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, mm -hmm. saying, 
the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Hallelujah! So in the kingdom of God, in this spiritual atmosphere, we are the ones that are sowing the seed, good seed, because we, 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 are, we, we are living a righteous life in the kingdom of God. But there's something, there's something is happening in there that I have never seen properly and you may never have seen it properly. In the kingdom, in this spiritual kingdom, look what is happening. I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture in our mind that things are happening in the kingdom of God that we have to observe. So I'm using the word church. So I'm trying to paint the picture what can happen in the church. But I'm going to use for now the kingdom of God. So in the kingdom, seed are sown. Plants are planted. Good seed. Good seed. But there's something happened whilst these good seed were planted. Watch what happened. Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. But, my, but while men slept, mm -hmm. his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat. Oh and my God. So the, 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 let's, let's deal with the wheat first. The wheat are the good seed, are the people of God, are the righteous man that planted in the church. But something happened in the church, brethren, that we are seeing here, that another planter came and plant here. Another planter, which is the enemy. I never looked at this in the science of spirituality. Jesus saying, this is what going to happen in the church. So when I looked at it, I saw the word T-A-R-E-S and it means tears. And in my little mind, all the years that I'm in church, I always picture wheat and tear, like you plant corn and grass grew up among the corn or anything else you plant. That other, other plants come and grow up among the plant. But I was dead wrong. You see, if you plant corn and grass grew up among the corn, you would know it's grass and you would just pluck out the grass or anything else. Because corn, you know, and nothing look like corn. It's different. But Jesus is using a plant. And that plant is exactly like the wheat. Listen. When I study it, I was shocked. And I'm going to give you a little of what I study. Because I was fooled that I think that you plant corn and grass grow up you don't know it's grass. But tears and wheat, you would not know the difference. And let me read something here for you. Sister Give is going to read this. Sister Give, watch this. Tears is a kind of darnel or false grain resembling wheat. Watch this good. 
Remember I was saying to you that you plant corn and grass grow up, you're gonna know it's grass. But the description of a tear and under the description of a wheat is the same thing. Jesus used that parable. It's the same thing. You would not, you're going to see when you would know the difference. Go back to the reading. Appearance. Go ahead. Tears. A kind of darning or false grain. Watch at it. It's a false grain. But when it grows up, it's exactly like the wheat. Picture what I'm saying. You're in church and there are people. These are people, you know. These are people in the church. Read it again for me, Sister Gift. It is a kind of darnel or false grain mm -hmm. resembling wheat. Resembling wheat. You cannot tell the difference. I was saying that you're going to pull out the grass because you know it's grass. We're going to go back to the script here for the backing of it. But it is so. I went to Google and I Googled it and I saw the picture. And you can't tell the difference. Read it. It looks and behaves so much like wheat. Watch at this. Brethren, watch at my warning. It looks and behaves. Mixed multitude behave like a real Christian. They can attain the pastorship. Looks and behave. Read it. It looks and behaves so much like wheat that it can't live without human assistance. Watch this. This I didn't know. It is, it has to be planted like wheat. It doesn't just grow up. Someone has to plant it and take care of it. Just like you take care of wheat. Just like you take care of your tomatoes. This is the fuller. This is what Jesus is saying. But you have to study it. You have to know what the Bible, when you read it, you have to know what he's saying to you and me. Read that little portion again for me. It looks and behaves so much like wheat. So that Christian in the church He's behaving like you. He's singing like you. He's preaching like you. Watch the mystery. Watch the mystery. Wheat tear in the church. Okay, listen to this one. Translate. Word translated. Tears look much like wheat in its early stages of growth. It looked like exactly in its early stages like the wheat. It looks like. I have one more little reading, the parable. The parable of the wheat and the tears is not static. The picture is dynamic with the good and the evil growing together. <laughs> Good. So let's come back to the scripture. I want you not to forget what we just read. So I'm going to go back to verse 24. Watch 
at something that I didn't know. I had a wrong concept about these two plans. And Jesus used these two plans as an example of good and evil. So good and evil is in the church. You are eating and you are drinking. You are sharing your homes, even with someone that is a tear. Let's go back again. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. Which sowed good seed mm -hmm. in his fields. Nice. Go ahead. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat you could stop and there, went so his way. You could stop right there. So look what happened, brethren. Whilst we are in church, the beginning of the church is always the good part of the church, especially a church brand new. Things go okay. Most of the people at that time are weak. They start their church. Then people start coming in. Just as what happened in the book of Exodus. When the children of Israel left, there were Egyptian. Egyptian people who left with them. And you know Egyptian people who are idol worshippers. So they come with their behavior. It is no difference here than the wheat and the tear. So Jesus is saying, whilst men sleep, the enemy came and sowed tear. Remember what they say about a tear. A tear just does not grow up like that. It has to be planted and taken off. Just as how you take care of the wheat. So here is the enemy or Satan came. And just as how Jesus bring you into the church. Listen my word, good. Listen to me. Just as how Jesus bring you and me into the church. Just so Satan come and bring John and Harry and Tom and Sheila and Jane. Why the idea? They are there to spoil the church. Easy goes. They become pastors. They become deacons. They become all sorts of people in the church because they look the same way. They act the same way. But it's only time. Read verse 25 again for me. Matthew chapter 13, verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat mm -hmm. and went his way. Satan gone. He left the tear or the bad people. Some of them started reacting soon, but some of them would be quiet and nice in the church until Satan give them the position in the church. Pastor, give it on his stupidness. <coughs> this can happen, Pastor, give. I'm saying to you and myself, they are not there for joke. I'm going back to the book of Exodus. And the mixed multitude overthrow Aaron. So this is why I said, can the tear overpower the wheat? And as we go down into the scripture, you are going to answer that question. So here is when we were not, as the pastor, were not looking properly and observing properly 
Satan come into his church and bring someone and he make him the deacon. And the Bible said, when that happened, Satan went his way. Watch what I'm saying, but I want you to watch your church. Every individual man and woman on this line have to watch your church. I didn't see this because I never studied this way. Look, look what happened, verse 26. Matthew chapter 13, verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know what happened here from my study? The only time you know that this is wheat and this is tear is when the plants start bearing fruit. The tear, it bears a black seed, according to study. The wheat is brown or red seed. So the only time you can detect the plant is from the fruit. It's about time now. It's a bad time. We're talking about people. Now that person stopped. He's in the position. He's in the position now to share bad doctrines, bad behavior. You can't move him. He becomes the pastor. He becomes the deacon. He becomes the pastor's wife. He hold the church now. She becomes the pastor's wife. Listen to what I'm saying again. You go study wheat and tear for yourself. The only read the scripture again, Mr. 26. And I'm going to go with it one more time. What Jesus is saying. Read it. Matthew chapter 13, verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up mm -hmm. and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears. So even from the blade, you would know. It's only when the fruits appear. And we are talking about a man. We are talking about a woman in the church. So he or she was there for years. Intermingling. Growing with you. Knowing the doctrine. And figuring out. How Satan is using that person's or person. How to get to dominate or control others in the church. How to sow bad seed. So only when this plant, the tear, not from the plant itself, not from the leaves, you can't make it out. You got to be a minister that sees and hears. The Holy Spirit has to I have to tell you things. Be careful of John. Be careful of Tom. Be careful of, of Sheila. The Holy Spirit not going to wait until that person start bringing forth fruit. So that is why we go back to Isaiah 56. He said, my watchmen are blind. They're not seeing. They become dumb. They are ignorant. So let's say 
that the tear is in the church and you have to wait to see the fruit that it is black. It already take over the church. It's already spoiled people in the church because it already bear fruits in the church. So this is why I'm saying, watch your minister. Is he seeing? Is he hearing from God? Does he believe in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit? If this is so hard to figure out and you cannot figure it out from your natural eyes, it takes the spiritual eyes to unfold that man or woman. I wonder if, I, I wonder if, if Brother Giff is crazy. Let's go down to verse 27 and see. Matthew chapter 13, verse 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him. This is the pastor come now. The pastor come. Listen to the pastor, I say. Go ahead. Sir, didst now, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Mm -hmm. From whence then has it tears? The pastor now seen the fruits. The fruits sat unfolding in the church. Take over the church. He now sat in asking question. Where, where this man or this woman come from? How we get here? No, he's asking this question. Listen, a pastor has to be a spiritual invest detective and and. The pastor has to be a spiritual detective. You hear me? Your pastor has to be a spiritual detective. Let's go back to that verse. Hear why I said that. Matthew chapter 13, verse 27. So the servants of the householder came. That's and the said pastor. Him, That's the pastor. No. He's shocked. The pastor is now shocked to see what's happening in the church. He didn't see this brother. He didn't see this sister. He didn't know. He didn't see what's happening under him because he's blind. He didn't see that somebody is lowering you. Somebody's causing you to fall. This is why I said your pastor have to be a spiritual detective. He has to see things from far. Read that verse again for me. Matthew chapter 13, verse 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, mm -hmm. Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Mm -hmm. From whence then has it tears? You see, it's too late now. Tears start to bear fruits, brethren. This is why I'm saying to you and me, be careful in the church. The church is not what you think it is. It's a spiritual place. And there are all sorts of spiritual people in there, good and bad spiritual people. There would be people in there who is working witchcraft. There will be people in there who ill speak and bring down people. You read that again for me. Matthew chapter 13, verse 27. So the servants of the householder 
came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Pastor in trouble. Pastor sit too late. Pastor is sleeping. Pastor went to bed. Pastor is slumbering. And you are losing. That's why we lose our children in the church. Pastor not seen. That's why we can't keep good people in the church. Care is too rampant. Look at 20, 28. Matthew chapter 13, verse 28. Mm -hmm. He said unto them, an enemy has done this. You have to know that. You have to know that, Pastor. From the moment a man and a woman come in, you are the one that feeding. You have to observe. Some people are going to give you a fight of your life. You're going to know who they are. They're going to try to sow their doctrine to you from the moment they come in or their behavior. Don't find yourself in trouble, pastor. Live close to the brethren, pastor. See about their soul. Know if they eat food. Know where they are painting. Be around them. Counsel them. Could he counsel? Could your pastor counsel? Is he a good counselor? When somebody falls into problem with their marriage or any other thing, how good is he? He might be very good in the world, but spiritually, is he good? Does he have patience? to sit down there with you night and day and mosquito is biting and he's waiting for the right time to put the right word in? Does he have that patience? Or he just have the name? And because he have that name, you just looked on him. I'm not going to say anything. Look at 29. Matthew chapter 13, verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy has done this. An enemy have done this. So you as a pastor have to know when the enemy come into the church to sow the tear. And every church have it. Every church have its tear. But a good pastor have his hands and his feet on that tear. He watch every movement that he or she makes. He will not ordain them to be deacon or evangelist. He have the foresight. That is what God give us. Foresight to see. When I your pastor have a word. When last he come back to you and said, I have a word for you. I have a word from the Lord for you. Does he use those type of languages? Does he come and say, I have a dream, a vision, a word for the church, for an individual? Does he, could he stand up before you as a man or woman that committing adultery and fornication and said, mm -mm, you're not tasting good. Something is wrong. That means he's seeing, he's feeling, he knows the tear before it bear the fruit. Remember what I said. You cannot know the tear, the tear and the wheat that grow up the same way. That's why Jesus, look at, look at Jesus now. 
leave. Look what Jesus. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 13, verse 28. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. Mm -hmm. The servants said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? Mm -mm. You see, because listen what Jesus said. Verse 29. And he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tears, you root up also <laughs> the wheat with them. You can't. They look the same way. That's why I was showing you up here. They are the same, only that they bear different fruit. So he said, leave them, let them grow. But you as the pastor have to be in control. You have to see, you have to hear. Man of God. So he said, leave them. But it didn't mean just leave them and let them do their own thing. No! Let's turn. Let's leave that for a minute. And I want to show you something here. If you think Jesus is joking, let's go to Matthew 7 and verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. He warning the church again. He warning the church again. This is the same tear that is here now. This is the tear that they ordain in the church. Read. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. <laughs> Beware. To turn the mind to see. To be attention, to be attentive, to apply oneself, to be aware, to take heed, to watch out. I'll go over that one more time when Sister Giff read this. Jesus is speaking in verse 15. And look at the word, what he said. Go ahead. He's saying be smart. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Go ahead. Beware of false prophets. Look at it again. Watch out. Beware to turn mine to attention. To attend to. To be attentive. To apply yourself. You're being aware. To, be, to apply oneself, to be aware, to take heed, to watch out. All of these lovely words come into this one word. Listen what Jesus is saying, to be aware. So if he's saying, but a gift, sister gift, to be aware, that means they're hiding. That means they're not showing up and say, I'm a false prophet. That means you know, have to pay attention. That means me have to pay attention of what's going on in the church. That's the question I'm asking. Can the tear overpowered the wheat? If Jesus is giving us all these symbols to be aware that mean they are hidden. So let, let's let's see it again. Matthew chapter seven, verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. Beware of false prophets. False prophet. So in your church, in my church, there are false people, and you see where they are. These are the people going to bring you the word. These are the people going to come and say, God say, time to leave your husband. Time for this and time for that. But Jesus is warning us 
Be careful of who you listen to. It can be your pastor. It can be your deacon. It can be your evangelist because this man is a prophet. Only that he is false. He move up to high position in the church. And when they move up there, sin becomes good in the church. They doesn't call out sin anymore. They are the leaders now. They don't have to call out sin. They want a big church with plenty of people. Doesn't care how they live. Oh, hallelujah. So don't run them. Don't call out sin. Be comfortable with sin. So he's saying, beware of that. Of your pastor, of your deacon. Let's see what, let's see what he's saying here. Said, beware of false prophets. This is not the prophets in the world. This is your prophet in your church, in my church. Watch this. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But wait, 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 wait. Wait. They what? They come in what? Which come to you in sheep's clothing. Cover up. Sheep is something that is in the scripture. Christian love sheep because it's a symbol of Jesus. So he wrapped up in this symbol. It covers up. Tear again. Tear again, brethren. You're not going to know them until they show their fruits. It is, it is saying here that they comes in sheep clothing. Watch this good. Watch this good. Which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening oh, wolves. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's one of the worst animal that any hunter hates. He can track you for miles. He would hide them. And a wolf, and and listen, I study wolves. I watch them on the documentaries. They would trace an animal for you for days. And tell me how they're tracing it. And that animal would be mile away from them. And they would smell the leaves that the animal bites. And they would know how strong the animal is. If the animals have lost their teeth and they are not feeding well, they would track that animal. They, have, they are so wise. I've seen them in documentaries. They would smell the hoof of that animal when that animal is running, that animal is miles away, and they would know if that hoof by the ground they smells, they would know if that animal is sick, and that animal is two days away from them. So they know that animal get, it would get weaker and weaker every day, a wolf. They are not an easy animal. Listen, when I saw that wolf smell the leaves that that cow bites and leaf, and this, the scientist said they, are, they know that animal is, have lost teeth, so he cannot feed well. So sooner or later, that animal is weak. So it's going to die or easy to kill. A wolf go after the easy prey. So let's go back to the wolf. Let's go back to 15. 
Watch how Jesus described a man or a woman in the church. Are you listening to me, brethren? Are you listening to me? Please, I'm begging you. This is the age we're living in. A false age, a testing age where the church is going through. Watch your pastor, watch your church. He or she might be covered up in wolf clothing, in sheep clothing. Let's go back to 15. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Beware. Jesus is warning you. He's warning me. I get trapped already. I get trapped. You read it. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You see who they are? Ravening. When a wolf, when you watch them eat, they tear the animal one hold the throat, and before the animal is dead, they start eating. They take off skin, any part of the animal, the teeth is so dangerous that Jesus is describing a wolf attitude. They're eating the hair off the meat. They're not taking their time to clean the meat. Is this someone among you? It's going to lead you or lead your daughter to stray. Ravenous, ravenous wolf. That is not a jokeified person. He is very, or she is very deceptful. And when and when he or she catch you, deceptive. Dressed up. Look like a man of God. Look like a woman of God. But Lord God, when you when they finish with you, you and you or I, I reach that those type of people already. And I was warned. I was warned, but I didn't take heed. Hmm. Let's go down. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Watch at it. Watch at it. Remember. Remember, we just come from the tear. You only can know the wheat by the tear by its fruit. It looks like this. Beware of the false prophet. It looks like. It looks like. Very close to. So Jesus is saying to me and to you, listen what Sister Gift said again. Read again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. So what I'm saying to you and me, we are reasoning. You are in the church or you are coming in the church. Stand back. Look. Let observe. Especially if your pastor is blind. Some pastor would warn you and say, you see that group over there? Don't go by that group. He knew them. He knew where you're tangled with them. You're going into wolf territory. So he's going to warn you. But some of them are blind. They can't see. And they can't bark. So they ain't going to tell you nothing. So listen to what Jesus is saying. For your own self good, listen to what Jesus is saying. Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. 
ye shall know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. Do men gather grapes of thorns? No, no man. When you go to gather grapes, you're gathering grapes. You ain't picking up thorns with it. So Jesus is saying to me and to you, be careful, brother Gift. When you're in the church, there are, there are grapes and there are thorns. I wish somebody had taught me this before. We had a lesson, Sabbath, and, and one young lady was saying, I get hurt. I tell my friend this in the church. And she went back and tell Tom, Dick, and Harry. That's because you talk to the wrong person. Be careful who you share your stories with. There are people in the church just for this that you will go and they will counsel you. But there are people who are just there waiting to hurt you. And they are in high positions. Man, I come from a place. When you talk about false churches of God, and they, they're not shame with it now. They are not shame with false church of God in America. When you see their behavior, they're not acting like, like sheep, wolf having sheep clothing. They're telling you they are wolf. Come. Big church of God mark up there. But when you go in the pen, you know that it's wolves. That is, they ain't clothed with sheep clothing anymore. When you see the attires, when you hear the doctrine, they are not shame anymore. Let's go down a little bit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs? Of thistles. All of these are parables. All of these are parables. Read this again. Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Look for the good tree when you go into that church. Look to see if your pastor is a good tree. Hear him counsel. Hear him give advice. See if he have the word. See if he can turn it over expressly, like how the false prophet in Timothy did. Expressly, they're behaving. They're not fooling. That's how Satan behaves. The spirit speak expressly that in the latter days, what's going to happen in the church? So Jesus is telling us here in verse 17, read it. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Look at the fruit of the person. Look at brother give fruit. Look at your pastor's fruit. See if he's a lazy man. When I talk about lazy, not physically. See if he's lazy with the word. See if he's a dumb dog. See if he cut the word in half. He can make good judgment. When you and somebody get in a scrape, if he would come like how David, son Solomon came and said, give me the baby. And he said, give me a knife. Let me cut the baby in half. This is a man that would fill off the Holy Spirit and could have, could have used his judgment. So look at yourself. Look at your pastor. Let's read the last verse. A tree must bring forth good fruits. Go ahead. Listen. So Matthew chapter 7, verse 17. 
Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth <laughs> evil fruit. I've said to you already, there are good people and there are bad people in the church. Look at your church. This is the warning. Observe your church. Observe your pastor. Read that last verse to me. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 7, verse 18. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. No, it can't. If Brother Giff is a good minister, all he's going to do is bring forth good fruits. His home is going to be right. His home, that's one of the first thing you have to look at a minister's home. Watch how he and his wife live. If you have children in the home, watch the home. If you see babies born in that home and his daughters or granddaughters are married and he, he have them there, you know something is wrong. He's a compromiser. He cannot give good advice. He's not bringing forth good fruit. Watch him. Watch me. Keep your eyes on us. And don't make no bad judgment. Because I know some of you would like to judge us. When you're judging, the Bible said, do a righteous judgment. Cut straight. Let your ear be ear and your knee be knee. To judge your pastor righteously. Judge me righteously. Have a great night in the name of Jesus Christ.